Hello there! Today I'm making board games about Asian night markets. It's a time challenge, so I only have one minute for the first one, ten minutes for the second one, and one hour for the last one. Let's get started. <laughs> I'm Albi. I'm Taiwanese American, and one of the best things about visiting Taiwan is the night markets, or ye si. From delicious oyster pancakes to giant fried chicken steaks bigger than your face, bustling Taiwanese night markets are known for great food at good prices. And in the past couple of years, Soko has been developing an Asian night market scene as well. For example, the 626 night market and the OC night market. They haven't been able to replicate the good prices yet though, but I thought, hey, why not make some board games about Asian night markets? I'm Albi, and I like to make board games. Now let's get started with one minute challenge. Now it's time for the one minute challenge. Ready, set, go. And you want to, and then you want to select your color. Oh, that's it. Okay, time is up. All right, so I'll quickly explain my game. So basically, this one minute game is uh, very similar to how Code Names is structured. There's teams of two, so um, from two players up to you know, as many as you possibly want. Basically, there's a deck of different kinds of night market foods. There's basically one card that will cause you to lose, which would be the stinky tofu. And then there's also two different colors. You um, want to get the ones that that are your color. So on your turn, you can either take something, uh, switch something, or uh, what is that? Fl uh, flip something. It's kind of elimination round. So whichever team loses first, I guess gets the stinky tofu will automatically lose and then it's just really up to whoever gets the most of their color after going back and forth so whoever gets all of their colors first then wins whoever goes first would have you know a plus one additional color for, for theirs so we would have to i guess determine that beforehand or there could just be you know like blue always goes first type of thing i'm going to design this out and then show you guys the final result so i cleaned up the rules and card counts drew some graphics on my ipad and put them out at the drugstore cut them out taped them together and voila my beautiful asian night market one minute challenge prototype a quick explanation of the one minute game the game can be played with two to twelve players in teams of two or three. You're either Team Taiwanese Sausage, Team Oyster Pancakes, or Team Boba. You randomly lay out these cards face up in a 5x5 grid and allow all players 10 to 15 seconds to memorize where everything is. Then we unflip them and have each player perform two card switches. The goal of the game is to have all of your team's cards unflipped to win. Meaning, if you're Team Sausage, you need all of the sausage cards unflipped by anybody in order to win. But there is a stinky tofu card that results in an automatic loss if your team unflips it. When playing with two players or two teams, the boba card is a neutral card. There are nine Taiwanese sausages, eight oyster pancakes, and seven boba cards. There are more cards for Taiwanese sausage because that team goes first and there's first player advantage. On each player's turn, you can do one of three things, announcing what you'll do before taking your action. You can officially unflip a card, peek at one and perform a switch, or do three switches. And that's it! Keep going around until one team wins! With my prototypes ready to go, it was time to playtest the 1 minute game. Testing both 2 and 3 player modes, here's the feedback I got. My playtesters liked that it was a mentally stimulating and relatively quick game. It was a fun party game of chance and memorization, and the stinky tofu instant death was fun, although I did borrow that element from code names. Cons were that it was too easy to troll the game by always doing 3 switches. If you lose track, you can feel lost, and the game would just feel random. For some players, just one switch of cards already messed up their mental model. Playtesters recommended a 4x5 grid instead of 5x5, a physical board so that if things get moved, the game wouldn't lose its form, and bigger cards in the funnel version. Overall, it was still pretty fun, and there was an appetite to play again. Ratings came in at 7.5, 5, and 5, for an average of 5.83. Mm, not the best, but not too bad for 1 minute, right? Now it's time for the 10 minute challenge. Ready, set, go! all cards are played. Game ends when all cards are played. Okay, well time's up. Um, I'll quickly explain the game that I made. This is a, an action-based game, kind of like Monopoly Deal, but it doesn't have like money and stuff like that. So you're at an Asian night market with your friends and you want to have the highest satisfaction by the end of the game and you have a capacity, stomach capacity. A limit. So there are cards you can play to increase your stomach capacity. 
and there are food cards that you can eat. So uh, you basically draw, it's one of these draw two, play three kind of games. So you draw cards and you play them and you could uh, place the food into your stomach basically to fill it. And then you can then digest it. After you digest it, then your capacity resets and you can keep eating food. And the food already counts as points. Um, the digesting, it just helps you to increase your capacity. And so they could keep eating more food. It also kind of protects cards that you already have played because if you play like a card like throwing up then that means you know you would have to throw up the contents of what you ate so there are action cards too like stealing from people causing others to throw up uh, because they overate also if you overeat yourself then you could throw up basically but you know why would you ever play that so maybe I don't need to build in that mechanism maybe there's like cards like friends more just like expanding your stomach that can increase your capacity and then this was a mechanism I was thinking of sharing where you basically can choose a person to your right where you split the food a certain item with and then you can also go to the bathroom where you partially di i was thinking maybe you're di you would digest them but i think increasing your capacity would make more sense and then lastly there are action cards so things that can help you draw more cards um steal cards peek so you can peek at two and draw one for example and then the throwing up which i already mentioned earlier and then the game ends once all cards are played how about this after your final draw after the card deck runs out then you finish that round and then the game ends yeah that's basically this game so i'm going to refine this a bit more and then show you the final results with the design done it was time to make the cards with some stock photos and a photoshop template i made I printed the cards on photo paper, cut them out, and had a shiny prototype ready to play test. Now how to play the 10 minute game, which is good for 2-4 players. The game is about eating as many delicious night market delicacies as you can, and the gameplay is basically a monopoly deal. On your turn you draw 2 cards and play 3. The deck is packed with night market food cards as well as action cards, and each food item has a number for how much stomach space it takes up, plus a number for how delicious it is. You have 10 spaces of stomach capacity, and eating more than that can cause you to throw up half of what's in your stomach, round it down. There are cards you can play to digest food, where you put all of the food cards in your stomach into a separate pile, clearing your stomach space. Once the deck runs out and everyone is done taking turns, the player with the most deliciousness points in their digested pile wins. I tested the game with two of my friends, and it was clear that the game lacked strategy and balance. The only pros from their feedback was that it had a funny theme and was simple. But because the only way to attack other players was to force them to eat too much or steal cards, there weren't really options to play other strategies. You just played the cards you got. Other cons were that it was too luck based, and the theme might only be understood by Taiwanese people. An improvement my friend suggested was that instead of waiting for a digest card, perhaps a person's entire move can be used to digest if they don't have that card. She would play it again if improvements were made, and gave the game a 6 out of 10. My other friend did not think it was fun and gave it a 3.5. Yikes. Average came out to 4.75. Hopefully I get a better score in the 1 hour challenge? Alright, now it's time for the 1 hour challenge. Ready, set, go. Alright, time's up. Okay, so quick overview of this game. Basically, um, each player is in charge of a section of the night market. They are uh, setting up different shops and the shops can make money. So it's a economics game where you try to make as much money as possible. These shops um, will count as points at the end of the game and you also count up your money. The game will, I'm still not sure about how the game ends. I think it will just be when the deck runs out. <clears throat> and then you just play one more round after that. It's five different categories of shops. Drink, dessert, fried foods, gray market, and seafood. Gray market is like counterfeit products, like watches, jewelry, and sunglasses, and those are more easily shut down during inspection. On your turn, you play any action cards, you roll. So each um, shop, you roll dice to see how much money you make on your turn, and then it will tell you uh, what number corresponds with what. Then you can buy and place, uh, you think buy new cards and then place them. If you buy a new shop, then you can roll for that immediately. And then there are uh, action cards that cause, you know, shops to be closed down or to upgrade uh, certain shops. There is this one card called Overpowered Competition where you have to have the same category in order to shut down an opponent's store. So it sort of does help that way. And then there's money. So there's like different rankings of how expensive certain categories are drink categories would be like on the low end and then mid end would be seafood and fried 
and then the high end would be a gray market. And desserts, I guess, would maybe low end and no categories. I think these would have like special stuff, so I haven't really decided what yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and work through these carts and I'll show you the final result. After making a sleek template and designing all the cards in Photoshop, I printed them out, cut them, and made some colorful money to complete my ready to play test prototype. All right, now time for a quick explanation of the grand finale one hour night market game challenge. The game is good for two to five players, and the goal is to build the most successful night market stand in your corner of the night market. This competitive game starts with four face up stand cards in the middle that replenishes from the stand deck whenever one is purchased. There's also a deck of action cards that can be purchased at a price that depends on how many stands you already have. If you have no stands, you get one free action card per turn, and you can purchase more for $2 each. The more stands you have, the higher the price of action cards. At the start of the game, the first player starts with $4, the second with 5 and all remaining players get 6 This is because players near the beginning have an advantage in choosing which stands they buy first, so giving them less money balances things out. At the start of your turn, you collect income by following the description on your stand cards. Some cards have direct income, while others require you to roll the die to see how much money you make. Some stands collect a lot on high rolls, or nothing at all on low rolls, while some are more balanced. So it's up to you to decide how much risk you're willing to take. After the income phase, you may purchase as many stands and action cards as you want. Action cards can be played at any time on your turn. The game also has mechanisms that emulate real life competition and economies of scale. For example, if another player also has a drink stand, all drink stands get negative one modifiers on their income rolls. Meaning if you roll a six, it's now a five. If you own three seafood stands, you get a free action card every turn. And if you own two fried stands, you get an extra dollar per turn with an additional dollar for extra fried stands after that. For two or more dessert stands, you get to roll with advantage, meaning you take the best of two rolls for each dessert stand. You know, I always wanted to make a market themed business building game, so I was really excited to playtest this one. And now, playtest results for the one hour challenge. First round of testing was in two player mode with my cousin. He liked that the themes, shops, and actions all fit well with the gameplay. The luck element in ruling for income was fun too, and even though you might get unlucky sometimes, you were incentivized to collect different types of shops to diversify your income and bonuses. It was good that action cards allow you to interact with other players, so you weren't just focused on doing your own thing. And the ability to attack others was fun too, especially with the opportunity to team up when playing with more people. Cons were that it was a bit hard to rebound if you were behind. There's too much going on, even though on the surface it may seem easy, and there was a lot of rules that may be hard to remember. He gave the game a 6.5 out of 10, but with his feedback, I made some adjustments. The variable pricing for action cards, and rules for giving players who are behind some money each round. This made it easier for players who were very behind to potentially rebound if they were unlucky early on, and close the gap a bit. I also created a player guide so that the rules, bonuses, and pricing charts were clearly laid out. With these enhancements, I playtested it again with two other friends this time in three player mode. These friends also liked the theme, concept, and variety with the different categories, abilities, and dice randomness. Although they thought it played well, there were still some balancing issues, especially with the cost of drink stands. Before, there was a maximum of five action cards a player could have, but I took away the maximum on the second play test. This incentivized the strategy of hoarding action cards and stacking them toward the end of the game, which was too powerful. Testers recommended either a max of playing two per turn or a max of buying two per turn to nerf the actions. Although it was fun rolling for your different stands, it made each turn quite long. Personally, I think there is good potential with the format of the game, but these issues would need to be worked out before it could reach its true potential. One of my friends had actually just returned from Taiwan when we played, and said that he wished there were more specific Taiwanese foods that he liked, such as papaya fresh milk, boba with grass jelly, or sweet potato balls. The food items I chose apparently were very Americanized, so I guess the shop could use an update with what's trending nowadays. Ratings came out to 9 and 8, for a second round average of 8.5, and a grand total of 7.83. I'll take it. <laughs> this was really fun, combining my tasty memories at Asian night markets with what this channel is about, making board games. If you want to try playing any of the games in this video, you can download them for free in the link below. Hit the like if you enjoyed watching, and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. Insta is at albisheng, and if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see me do in future videos, let me know in the comments. Have a great day, and I'll be showing you in the next one.